and welcome back everyone to the video series dedicated show on MTV that believes Shrek is love and Shrek is life. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge, Season 38, Episode 10, and we have a lot to unpack. So let's start off where last episode left off, and that was all the pairings being split into two big teams, and then coming back to the Challenge house, we hear from Mariah, who likes her team, but on the other hand, Fessel's team thinks they are stacked, and they are feeling themselves, as Fessel calls a team meeting uh, to reinforce their feelings of feeling like a stacked team. He's also wearing oven mittens. I don't know why. Is he baking a cake? Like, hey, welcome to the team. Here's a cake. But they're feeling really good about themselves. And comparatively, Mariah's team seems to be a lot quieter. I do agree with the fact that Jordan does say at one point that Mariah's team is going to have to play crafty. They're going to have to be a little bit more craftier if they want to win a daily challenge and play up to their strengths, which ironically is not one of their strengths. Strength is not one of their strengths. Size is not, but they do have stamina. They do have the brains and they feel like if they work to their strengths, they can come out on top. Some are optimistic, others not so much. We get to see Devin and Jordan talk things out because Tori says in a confessional that Jordan doesn't necessarily trust Devin at all. And I think that they are working alongside each other or had a mutual understanding that they wouldn't come after each other in this game because of their partners and their friendship to one another with Tori and Anissa. But now that they have split from their partners, even with being on the same team, you can take shots at one another. But... We hear from Devin trying to put out an olive branch saying, I know what you've heard about me. I know my reputation in the game, but we can work together to help out this team. We are pretty much two of the strongest competitors on our team, and we should work together, get on the same page, and we could be successful possibly. Now, Jordan doesn't seem all that enthused to jump into a deal with Devin. They even talk about Tori for a little bit, and Jordan brings up that it seems hypocritical that Tori, with everything that she's done with the talking about the Fessel hookup in season 36, the opening, and then uh, hooking up with Emmanuel, all on national TV, and now he's having his fun in the house, and she has a problem with it, and Jordan is now looked at as the bad guy. He calls her hypocritical. Devin says, cut her some slack. She's still in love with you. I'm still in line thinking that if Jordan and Tori came into the house and worked on their friendship slowly and didn't cross any boundaries with getting into bed with each other and saying I love you, this wouldn't be as explosive as it has been or we saw last episode. That's pure speculation because it could still be a big problem. But I don't think it would have been as big of a problem because it wouldn't have been somebody feeling like they've been let on. I'm getting too much into it. We move on to the next morning where things are very awkward when Jordan goes to get a cup of coffee. Tori, Anissa, and Amber are in the kitchen doing their thing, eating a meal, and it's awkwardly silent until Jordan leaves the room. And then Tori, who was biting her tongue, then just like lets all of her emotions out. Uh, venting to Anissa, letting her know how she feels. Her blood is boiling with Jordan just in the room. We even hear from Nerese in a confessional who is still trying to recover from an amazing makeout session with Jordan from the other night and that morning. I mean, get this girl a glass of water. But after all of that, everybody dons on their challenge gear, meets up with TJ for this week's daily challenge, which is over water as well as being sponsored by Puss in Boots. That's right, the Shrek spin-off movie starring Antonio Banderas. They go all out for this TV spot with TJ reading the movie plot, Antonio Banderas talking about the movie, as well as Universal Studios giving the challenge an animated overlay to put in the episode. This all ties into this week's daily challenge called Last Life, which will have the teams putting people up one-on-one -on, -one on a giant floating platform over the water where they're gonna have to wrestle each other off the bridge. The team that can knock out every single one of the opposing team's players will win this daily challenge and win into power and safety. This daily challenge is relatively fun. I'm not so into the Puss in Boots 
movie promotion sponsorship and how invested the show was in showing us Antonio Banderas' character at every single moment. But I thought the Daily Challenge was pretty interesting if it was an individual season or if the season was still in pairs. You could have had a bracket. However, for a game that just turned into a team-based game, I would like to see team-based daily challenges. I'm sorry, but I felt this daily challenge kind of fell flat. Sort of like Team Mariah's team in this daily challenge, spoiler alert, because this was essentially a solo daily challenge, mainly having to do with strength. This was complete and utter dominance by Fessel's team. You have Nelson beating Devin, even though Devin takes out Nelson. Devin's footing came off the platform and the bridge first, meaning he lost the point, Nelson wins, Horacio and Bananas was a really good matchup and Horacio actually beats Bananas and gets to go back onto his team's platform to help them try to win against the rest of the players. However, Chauncey wins against Jordan, then Fessel takes out Kenny. Now, a lot of Team Mariah's team felt that Fessel was going to be able to beat anybody on their team. So why not just put Kenny up there and see what could happen? Kind of waste Fessel's turn in a sense. Fessel kind of just like lightly pushes Kenny off the bridge and he instantly goes into the water. Horacio is left standing. He is the last man standing for Team Mariah. Fessel volunteers to take out Horacio. It was a pretty interesting matchup to begin with, but Fessel ultimately wins. Then we move on to the women's side of things and it is even more dominant by Team Fessel. You have Casey taking out Mariah. Olivia putting Nani in a neck brace, which was scary to see. I mean, Nani falling from that height, falling what looks like to be on her head and neck area. And then she was put into a neck brace, put into a van, taken to the hospital. But before she left for the hospital, the edit kind of made it seem like, oh, she's fine. So don't even worry about her. She'll be back. Tori wins against Amber. And it seems like Tori and Amber were play fighting a bit. Now, I was a little bit like kind of ugh. now they're just giving up and why not why I mean looking back I mean Horacio was gonna have to take out Fessel and Chauncey by himself so with Amber and Norris the last two standing they were gonna have to win against four women and that's just not the case also Nani just got almost seriously injured so I think Amber was like look we're not going to win this thing anyways. Even if we go to a tiebreaker, we're not going to be able to win this thing. We're going to be a woman down. The men were useless. So how about we just play fight a little bit? I'll hop off safely off the bridge and everything will be all fine and you guys can take the win. Tori wins round three against Amber and Anissa wins easily against Maurice. Team Fessel wins this dominantly and TJ lets them know that they're gonna have to interrogate all four men on Team Mariah as it is a men's elimination day. So heading back to the house, hearing it's a guy's day, I'm instantly thinking, Kenny, I hope you're ready to go into elimination because you're gonna be going in. He had like two or three confessionals at that point in the episode and I was just like, he's going in. 100% he's going in. We go to the interrogation room where there's stadium seating and Team Fessel gets to talk before they get to interview everybody. And there is a push, mainly it feels like from Fessel and Tori, that Jordan should be the vote to be sent directly into the elimination. Now we get to the interrogation. Kenny is up first and he just volunteers. If it's a call out, I want to have all the power to know who I'm going up against. And he wants to go up against Horacio. At that point, I'm like, Kenny, my guy. It doesn't matter who's going into the elimination against you. Your chances are slim going up against any one of these three guys. Horacio comes into the interrogation and says that he shouldn't be the main vote because Team Fessel should be looking at trying to take out Team Mariah's best guy, which is either Jordan or Devin. Then Devin comes in and he is trying to be all vague. He doesn't want to give too much away. He just hopes that he has done enough that he is not going to be the main vote. And then Jordan comes into a silent room. Nobody wants to say anything. Jordan seems to be the first person to say something. I'm not going to be coming back with who I could be possibly facing in an elimination. And even if I'm in a draw, do you think people are going to send me one of the best players on my team into the elimination? So why even entertain the idea of sending me into the elimination. This is when Tori asks, if the roles were reversed, 
would you have my back in this scenario? Which I thought came out of left field. I understand she might want some answers and she would want him to say it in front of everybody because when you're one-on-one, -on -one, first of all, I don't even know if she wants or if they want to talk to each other one-on-one, -on -one, but if you just talk to each other one-on-one -on -one with nobody else around, you can pretty much say whatever you want and then it's your word against his. Now you're kind of putting him on the spot in front of everybody. It was pretty awkward. It was pretty awkward before Jordan started talking and then it was pretty awkward asking that question in front of everybody. It was very poignant. It was something that really didn't have to be asked in that time and space, but you kind of miss 100% of the goals you don't shoot, you know? After the interrogation, that's when we see Nani return to the house. She had all these tests done and she got a clean bill of health. Nothing was wrong with her. And that's when everybody gets on their fancy clothes and goes to the bar to have a good time. We hear from Mariah, Amber, and Horacio that Kenny needs to be sent in. For the betterment of the team, Kenny needs to be sent in and everybody has to be on the same page. Then Tori is talking to Fessel and I thought that this was actually a decent bit of strategy from Tori where she was talking to Fessel saying, look, I understand that everybody wants to maybe throw in Jordan, but think about this. Maybe next week we're not in power. If we shoot for the stars now by sending in their best player, next week when they're in power, they're gonna do the same thing and it's either me, Casey or me. And I'll be honest, it's not gonna be Casey. Nani would veto that right off the table and I don't think there's a lot of people on the other team that would want to target Casey. I think Tori is looking out for herself, which is a really good idea. Fessel seems reluctant. He's like, oh, Tori wants to look out for her best friend and her ex and I can see you right through it, but you never know. Maybe I should trust Tori. Tori goes and talks with Jordan, trying to strike up a deal that, hey, if we scratch your back this week, you'll scratch our back next week if somehow you guys get into power. She also apologizes in this conversation to Jordan for how she reacted to him during the conversation they had in the previous episode. Jordan, again, is reluctant to jump into a deal, a Tory deal, because things have a way of changing in the house and also Jordan is looking out for his team because he wants to make the best decision to keep his team strong. The next morning, Kenny is feeling very confident, but that's when everybody dons their challenge gear, meets up with TJ in the zone for this week's elimination. TJ calls out Mariah's four men, and that's when he turns his attention over to Team Fessel and asks for everybody to give their vote on who they want to send directly into the elimination. And T. Fessel is like, oh, crap, uh, I knew I forgot something. Ooh, shoot, uh, huddle, huddle up, everybody, huddle up. And they're all talking about, oh, who, who are we going to talk about? Who are we going to say? Nelson sees right through this BS. And he's like, y'all know who you want to send into the elimination. Y'all were talking about it. And me, Nelson, Olivia, and Chauncey were left out of the talks completely. So Fessel kicks things off voting for Horacio. And then it is a domino effect of everybody voting for Horacio, except for Olivia, who votes for Kenny. So by a vote of seven to one, Horacio is going directly into this week's elimination. And then we get to the draw. Devin is up first, pulls the sword with authority, and it is the safe sword. And he puts it down on the rock. And that's when he declares that he is playing nice guy and is a team player by saving Jordan and sending in Kenny to take on Horacio in this week's elimination called Breaking Barriers. Both men are gonna start on the outside of this tunnel and they're gonna have to use the tools provided to them to break through every single wall or barrier to get to the middle point of the tunnel and press a button. The first man to press the button in the middle of the tunnel wins. Horacio, who has a background with construction, was able to make quick work of each and every single barrier, except for maybe the third barrier, which is going to be the longest. The third barrier was like lug nuts or nuts. I don't know. It's They had to use a wrench and take out all these bolts. And that one was going to be the longest door out of all, all of them. They could use their fists, they used the bolt cutters, they used an ax, and then they had to use a wrench. And Kenny 
got to the third door. I don't care how many times the challenge uses the same scene over and over again to make it seem like this is really close. I don't think it was that close at all. I mean, Horacio had half the door done when Kenny just got to the bolt door. And if Horacio is saying these bolts are hard, I can only imagine how hard these are for Kenny. Horacio breaks through all the barriers, hits the button, and is declared the winner. Four elimination wins on the season. He is one elimination win from tying a long-standing challenge record of the most elimination wins in a single season. Kenny gets a long, sad goodbye. He hugs Casey, Casey gets very teary-eyed, and then Kenny walks out the zone exit and through the bushes and is gone. Horacio rejoins his team as TJ tells them to get ready for the next daily and I'll see you very soon. And everybody walks out the zone and boom, it should be done. The episode should be done. However, it is not because, and that's when Kenny comes walking back into the zone to meet up with TJ, who let it be known that he is technically still alive in this game. That players who are eliminated from here on out will live or die by their ride or die. That you can be eliminated However, as long as your original partner stays in the game, you'll have an opportunity to win yourself back into the game. That means there is a Redemption House style twist to this game, but that also means technically we didn't lose anybody this episode and we're not going to lose anybody necessarily in the next coming episodes, as long as, you know, an original pairing don't go out one after the other. But I just realized nothing's going to change with Kenny. Now that even with him being eliminated and him not going to be shown on camera, he wasn't necessarily getting any confessionals before this episode, and he wasn't being shown a whole lot in this episode. So he's still in this game, but he's just not going to be shown on camera. That's Kenny for the first like nine episodes of this season. <laughs> I have a lot to talk about with my feelings of this episode, how this episode felt with the two team twists being implemented and this being the first episode with the two team twists being implemented with also the redemption house twist that was now in place. I have a lot to say about that, but I'm going to get into all of my thoughts and feelings and ranting all in my tiny table talk tomorrow about this episode. But what do you think about this episode? Let me know down in the comment section below. What do you think about this being the first episode with the two team twist? What do you think about the daily challenge? Do you think it played too much into Team Fessel's hands? Let me know down in the comment section below. Also, what do you think about them voting in Horacio instead of taking the shot at Jordan. Do you think that was the right decision as well as what do you think about Horacio versus Kenny and the elimination game? And also let me know what you think about the redemption house twist. Let me know that down in the comment section because I really want to hear what everybody has to say about this episode. I have my own thoughts. Again, I'll get into tiny table talk tomorrow, but yeah. But that is it. I want to give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who is watching this video up to this point. I'll be back really, really soon with more Challenge 38 content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.